Hi, my name is Farmer Kurt, and this is Allstead Farms. Welcome to Chester, New Jersey, in the Highlands region. My name is Kurt Allstead. I'm a full-time farmer here in Chester, New Jersey, which is located in Western Morris County. We farm over 600 acres of land, all fruits and vegetables, and over 400 of that is permanently preserved and owned by us, and uh, the rest is leased and also uh, mostly permanently preserved. And perhaps what's most unique about our business is that uh, everything we produce here on our farm is retailed directly to the consumer, whether it's pick your own or through our CSA. I've been involved with the CSA for over five years now, so I'm really familiar with how fresh. There's nothing better than a Jersey strawberry grown during season picked that day. Hi, I'm Pete Nietzsche, agricultural agent with Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Morris County. Strawberries are a high value niche crop for local farmers and they are beneficial because they help attract customers early in the growing season. Strawberries are often utilized by growers to help them market many of the other spring crops they grow such as asparagus, lettuce, greens and bedding plants. I think there's a great opportunity for new growers to be growing strawberries. It is a short season but the fact that if you're driving along with farm stands, not only do I get my strawberries here, but if I'm out and shopping at a local farm um, somewhere closer to home, I'm always picking them up. So I think there's a great opportunity. So today we're standing in uh, one of our vast strawberry fields. Uh, we grow over 18 acres of strawberries. We use both plastic culture and matted row systems for producing our strawberries. We grow a wide number of varieties based on which cultural system that uh, we're using. For, for many years, we grew just matted row strawberries, which was the traditional uh, narrow ribbon method here in New Jersey and in the whole Northeast. Uh, when we started to see the uh, research being done on plastic culture systems, we decided to incorporate that into our farm in addition to the matted row because we discovered that we could bring strawberries to market two to three weeks in advance of the matted row. So now with the combination of matted row and plastic culture, we can create a five to six week season for strawberries when it used to be traditionally just a three to four week season. And we're also able to bring strawberries to our consumers as early as mid-May. Uh, the, these last few years have been colder springs. Uh, if we didn't have plastic culture strawberries, we wouldn't have berries until the, the 10th of June. Because of plastic culture, we still had strawberries for Memorial Day weekend each of those, each of those years. What are the critical points the farmer needs to know? One of the biggest issues farmers need to consider when growing strawberries is the large amounts of labor needed to harvest the crop. Strawberry harvest is labor intensive and occurs during a short period in the late spring to early summer. Many growers address this concern by selling strawberries as pick your own. Pick your own marketing works well if the farm is in a good location and the grower is willing to invite the public in. If growers choose to market their strawberries off of the farm, great care must be taken in moving the strawberries because they are fragile and don't ship well. Because of this fragile nature, strawberries are typically best sold locally at farm stands, farmers markets, and through community supported agriculture arrangements. Finally, the major pest concern of strawberries are several fungal diseases. These fungal diseases can be a challenge to manage, especially in humid areas during wet springs and farmers should be very aware of them and ready to implement control measures. Many growers are now taking advantage of the plastic culture system of growing strawberries. The plastic culture system has several advantages, including high yields, good fruit quality, good weed control, and earlier harvests. These earlier harvests can help farmers beat other growers to market and also help them sell other season crops to their customers. So one of the advantages of the plastic culture system is that we're able to control the planting of it in a very short rotation. We're planting those plants in uh, summertime, late July, early August, and we're able to harvest those fruit the following spring. Uh, we generally keep a plastic culture system in place for two harvest seasons, then we're able to rotate that field into a late fall crop. The matted rose systems we'll keep for four to five harvest seasons, we plant dormant plants at the very early springtime, and then we'll harvest the following year. Uh, they require a whole uh, system of rejuvenation uh, that we do each summertime following harvest. So it's a little bit more intensive management system than the plastic culture. 
But the reality about strawberry growing is no matter which system you use, it requires a tremendous amount of management and a lot of attention to detail to ensure a profitable crop. When you're choosing to establish strawberries, it takes a lot of plants to create the sea of strawberries you see behind me. Um, on a plastic culture system, we're planting plants double row on six foot centers, and that means one, three square feet to every single plant. If you do the math, you'll find out that's about just short of 15,000 plants per acre. Uh, we do that same population in the matted row as well. We are, we're considering moving that down to five foot with double rows, but we're not quite there just yet. Growing strawberries requires a, a lot of intense management, and it also requires some specialized equipment. If you're gonna have a plastic culture system, you're gonna need to have a raised bed plastic laying machine. If you're gonna raise matted row, you're gonna need to have a machine that will transplant those plants at equal spacing. Um, renovation for matted row requires mowers, and even on a plastic culture system, you're gonna to have to renovate those plants, which requires a, a nice, good quality mower to mow them off perhaps a rototiller, tillage equipment to prepare the ground, and disease control is something that you need to be conscientious about. Uh, fungal diseases especially are challenging as well as a couple insect pests. It's very also important uh, when you're considering strawberry growing to make sure that you have suitable water for irrigation available, and water is needed not only for irrigating the crop when it's in production, but also potentially for frost protection as well. And strawberries need water not only when they're producing fruit, but also later in the summer following renovation uh, to make sure that you're returning with a healthy plant. These are perennial plants. They're gonna be differentiating fruit buds going into the fall. You need to make sure there's adequate moisture throughout that period of time. When you're choosing a site location for strawberries, we always like to choose a site that is, uh, that's as high as possible. We don't wanna have a frost pocket. We wanna have good airflow. And not only is that beneficial for frost, but it's also beneficial for drainage for diseases. Uh, we also like to consider full light. Strawberries thrive in sunlight, uh, so you don't want to have them in a shady area. You want to make sure it's a wide open field. Perhaps one of the biggest challenges of being a strawberry grower is making sure that you have a market that's profitable for your crop. We're all retailers. Uh, a lot of our crop is sold pick your own. We also sell them through our farm store. We sell them through our CSA chapters and we also sell them at our farmer's markets. Managing the crop load to ensure that you're not losing fruit is really critical. And it's easy to grow a lot of strawberries. It's really hard to harvest and sell a lot of strawberries. Um, if you choose to pick your own route, you need to be very conscientious of uh, too much, too little. It's easy to have more customers than you have crop and nothing aggravates a pick your own customer more than them coming out and not finding strawberries. Likewise, you could have too many strawberries and not enough customers or a couple rainy weekends in a row and you could have a tremendous amount of crop rotting in your field with no other alternatives. That one of the reasons we have a diversity, a, a, a diverse means of retailing is so that we can use one system as a backup to the other. Uh, we also do a lot of value added with our strawberries. We are able to take ripe fruit and use them for uh, strawberry slushies in our retail store. We also make our own homemade strawberry ice cream. We also do a number of food events that utilize strawberries. So everything is designed to prevent waste to ensure that we can have as much backup as possible to our retailing plants so we don't lose crop. And it, even with all that we've done, we've still had seasons where there's a lot of wet weather and a lot of rainy weekends and we can really be in trouble with strawberries. On the other hand, we've had years where we hit all the weekends well and people are really enthused and we sell every strawberry that we have. One of the reasons why plastic culture systems have really become valuable here in New Jersey agriculture because it gets our fruit to market earlier. And there is a large consumer demand for local strawberries. While the Florida and California cultivars may look very attractive and be impressive because of their size, they just can't duplicate the flavor, the texture, the aroma of a local Jersey Fresh berry. And consumers know this. They're happy to have a berry in the middle of the winter and tolerate its lack of flavor for the fact that they still at least get a strawberry. But when it's local strawberry season, they want something that's produced here at home. That's the marketing edge to being a local strawberry producer, to using a plastic culture system to get out in the market a few weeks earlier. 
you're going to be a strawberry grower, it's very important to consider storage and shelf life because if you're putting a lot of money into growing strawberries, you need them to hold as much as possible. Temperature is one of the big things you need to think about. We harvest strawberries as early as possible in the morning at the break of dawn, 5 to 5.30 in June, and we keep a refrigerated truck right out in the field so as fast as the strawberries are being harvested, at the coolest temperature that's possible during the day, they're going right into refrigeration to bring that field heat out of them down to 34 degrees. We know that if we get those strawberries cold quickly, we'll get much superior shelf life out of them. The reality is all the qualities that consumers love in a local New Jersey strawberry, the flavor, the texture, the color, the aroma, are not necessarily, uh, don't necessarily contribute to long shelf life. And so that's one disadvantage of a local berry compared to the competitors from California and Florida. Those things will hold for weeks, but have no flavor. Ours hold for a couple days, but have great flavor. So you need to be really thoughtful about storing things, keeping it cold, and thinking about a backup if you have some unsold berries. You always want to be thinking about food. So if you're thinking about strawberry production for a CSA, one of the things you need to consider first is that you're going to have to establish the strawberries a full year in advance of your CSA customer getting those berries, which is contrary in some respects to the whole thought process or the whole philosophy behind CSA where they pay up front for the crop. They'd be paying two years in advance, so it's just not possible. So it's a little bit speculative to be a strawberry grower for a CSA. So you're going to be investing in that crop a full year in advance, um, and then without any knowledge of how many members you're going to have in your CSA. So you're going to have to just use your best judgment to decide what the right number of strawberries is and always be thinking about a backup plan for what you can use your excess fruit for. Maybe there's another market, perhaps there's a restaurant, maybe you have a little stand that you can set up to sell your berries or perhaps there's another local grower that has a retail outlet that you can sell to. Um, harvesting early is critical, keep that temperature cold. Uh, we'd recommend harvesting the same day as distribution so that the berries are as fresh as possible and keep them as cold as possible until the CSA member comes to get it and ensuring that they know that it's important to keep their berries cold so that the transition from you storing them to the, to the, to the CSA member getting them is as short as possible out of refrigeration. When we first started growing strawberries years ago, and it's been 35 years now that we've been growing strawberries, we harvested into the traditional green Beauregard quart container. Uh, and they certainly function well, and they're, they're economical. We still use them for pick your own customers. But we find that in retail, they're a little bit more challenging. If they get any amount of moisture in them at all, they tend to degrade very quickly, they break apart, they lose their integrity. Uh, and there's also no way of covering them easily. So, berries can get very easily damaged. As a result, we've switched to clamshells, plastic clamshells, which may seem a little bit more commercial, and we like selling them in our store, clamshell open so people can see the berries, tips up always, always the caps berry tips up, it shows the most attractive um, nature of the berry to the customer. But what's nice about the clamshell, it's very functional if you're packing CSA shares. You can close it, uh, if something goes against it, it's not going to damage the berries, the berries don't fall out, and even for transport to a farmer's market, again, the closed clamshells offer a lot of protection from berries falling out if the truck jostles or something. Uh, you can always open them up when it's time to retail again and top them off. So, and the nice thing about the plastic clamshells is you can recycle them. Not only are they recyclable long term, but you can recycle them in-house too if you have berries that aren't used. Uh, or aren't sold that you're repurposing for cooking or something, you can then wash, sanitize, and reuse the containers. So it really reduces the amount of waste as well. I think when you have everything displayed nicely in a package, um, I don't think the package itself matters, but also understanding how you can take that home, like they're packaged here in a plastic tray. I think it's great because I know that I'm not gonna squish them um, when I get home or in the car. Uh, also seeing a display of all the produce laid out like they have here, it's so enticing. So I think that's a huge player in the buyer sense of when I see a big display, I just immediately am drawn to it and I want to buy. And sometimes I want to buy more than maybe I plan to buy.